In this lesson, we're going to be understanding the concept of a function. The success criteria is, I can represent a relation as a set of ordered pairs, I can determine whether a relation is a function, and I can use functions to solve real-life problems. So I'm going to scroll down here. Ordered pairs can be used to show inputs and outputs. Okay, the input of the ordered pair is usually our x value, and our output is usually the y value. Okay, so if the ordered pair is written like x comma y, x you can think of as being the input, and then y is the output. Now we're going to talk about relations and mapping diagrams. A relation pairs inputs with outputs. A relation can be represented by ordered pairs or a mapping diagram. So here's a relation written as ordered pairs, 0, 1, 1, 2, and 2, 4. The blue ones are the inputs, the red ones are the outputs. And then here's the exact same relation as a mapping diagram. Okay, we have our input column, we have our output column, and then our inputs are being mapped with these arrows towards the corresponding output. So 0 goes with 1, 1 goes with 2, and 2 goes with 4. For this example, we're going to list the ordered pairs shown in each mapping diagram. Okay, well... My input here is 1, and it goes to a 3, so that's going to be the ordered pair 1, comma 3. Then here I have my, an input of 2 that goes to 6, so that's going to be 2, comma 6. And then I have 3 that goes to 9, 3, comma 9. And then 4 goes to 12, so the input's 4, output's 12, that's going to be 4, comma 12. All right, so now I listed all the ordered pairs for part A. For part B, I have this input, but I'm not going to match it up with this one. I'm going to follow the arrow, and this 0 is going to go with an output of 0. So my first ordered pair is going to be 0, 0. Then I have 2. Well, this 2 goes to 1, and it goes to negative 2. So the 2 goes to 1. That's going to be written as 2, comma 1. Then the 2 going to negative 2. That's going to be 2, negative 2. And then 4 going to negative 3. So it's 4, comma, negative 3. All right, so we've written all the corresponding ordered pairs to both of these mapping diagrams, and now we're done. So right now we're going to talk about what a function is. A relation that pairs each input with exactly one output is a function. All right, so for these examples, we're going to determine whether each relation is a function. Okay? So if I look over at this mapping diagram, I have my input of negative 9 that goes to 0. I have my input of negative 2 that goes to 5. I have my input of 5 that goes to 10, and my input of 12 that also goes to 10. Okay, so if we look back at our definition, each input has to have exactly one output. All right, well, this 5 is going to 10, this 12 is going to 10, so even though these are going to the same output, they're different inputs, so this is still going to be a function, okay? Because all of these inputs only go to one number in the output here. All right, so for part B, I have negative 2 that goes to 4, negative 1 goes to 3, 0 is going to both 5 and 6, 1 is going to 6, and then 2 is going to 7. Okay? Well, this is actually not going to be a function, because if we look, the definition is each input has to go to exactly one output, but my input of 0 is actually going to both 5 and 6, so 0 has two outputs. So because of that, it's not exactly 1, therefore this is not a function. All right, and now we're done with this example. For this example, we have a mapping diagram that represents the prices of one-way subway tickets in different zones of a city. Okay, so here's our mapping diagram. Part A is asking, is the price of a subway ticket a function of the zone number? Okay, well, zone zero goes to this $2 output price. Zone one goes to $3.50. Zone two goes to $5.00 and then zone three goes to 650. Because each input only has exactly one output, right? Like the zero is not going to two numbers or the one's not going to more than one number. Okay, since all of these are going to just one number in the mapping diagram, we know that this is going to be a function. So I'm gonna scroll down here. Yes, this is a function. Okay, and that's because each input has exactly one output. Now, for part B, it says describe the relationship between the price and the zone number. Okay, well, I can see that the zone zero costs $2, okay, and then when I go up one zone, okay, I'm going from $2 to $3.50, and 
And then when I go up another zone, I'm going from three fifty to five dollars. And then when I go up another zone, I'm going from five dollars to six fifty. So if you notice, each time that I increase my zone number, I'm also increasing my output price by one dollar and fifty cents. So plus one fifty. plus 150 and plus 150. So describe the relationship between the price and the zone number every time the zone number increases by one, the price increases by one dollar and fifty cents okay now because this has a constant rate of change this is actually going to be a linear relationship if we were to graph that it would all be on one line anyway we've answered our question successfully and now we're done